morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for November 28, 2023, man shot dead in Keyfield, West Westmoreland. Hours after a man was shot and killed in White House, Westmoreland on Monday evening, another man was gone down in Keyfield in the parish. The deceased has been identified by his alias as Scat. Deputy Superintendent of Police in charge of operations in the Westmoreland Police Division, Adrian Hamilton, confirmed the incident with the news. The news understands that while the police were busy processing the crime scene in White House, they were called about another murder in a neighboring community. Reports are that about 6 p.m., Scat stopped to remove a tool from the trunk of his station wagon when a bag rode up and the assailants fired multiple shots, hitting him to the upper body. He died on the scene. Investigations are ongoing. Man mowed down on Maypen to Williamsfield Highway A man died after he was mowed down on the Maypen to Williamsfield Highway on Sunday night. Police named the deceased as Javon Emhard, 40, a resident of Comfort Hall District in Manchester. A police report said about 7.50 p.m., Nemard's vehicle overheated while traveling uphill towards Williamsfield. He pulled over in the westbound lane, about 500 meters from the Williamsfield roundabout. Police said Nemard was opening the radiator when he ran into the road to escape hot water. Nemard reportedly ran into the path of a Honda step wagon traveling west towards and was mowed down. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Teacher hospitalized the following three vehicle crash in Mandeville. A high school teacher has been hospitalized after she was mowed down during a three vehicle crash in Mandeville on Monday. Preliminary reports are that about 4.20 p.m., the teacher was walking from school on Manchester Road when upon reaching the intersection with Grove Road, she was mowed down. The news was told that a Toyota Hilux traveling southerly from the town center got out of control resulting from brake failure and crashed into a Toyota RAV4 heading in the opposite direction. The RAV4 then collided with a taxi. The teacher was rushed to the hospital where she was admitted for treatment. There were no other reports of injuries. Father wants the justice after 11-year-old son reportedly pepper sprayed by cop. The father of an 11-year-old boy who was forcibly restrained and reportedly pepper-sprayed by a police officer in Araka Besa St. Mary last Friday is hoping some justice will come from the incident that has left him and his family traumatized. My son is a quiet boy. He's only talkative around his peers. And right now, I don't know what is going through his head, said the Fitzroy Robinson. Robinson is still in shock that a routine school pickup of his children ended so badly. When I reached a few meters from the police station after leaving the school, I saw the transport authority and some police. They stopped me and I stopped, he told the news. He said that the police officer told him he would be charged for failing to place his six-year-old daughter in a car seat and also because his son was not wearing a seat belt. I replied that he cannot charge me for a car seat as the law was thrown out, but he can charge me for the children not wearing a seat belt, said Robinson. Robinson said he began arguing his point making the cop aware that he knew his rights and that he was entitled to freedom of speech. The officer then proceeded to give him a ticket. He crossed the road and I was on my phone, telling my friend that the idiot police were going to charge me for the car seat, said Robinson. Robinson said another officer then asked him who he was referring to and a heated argument developed. His children saw him being handcuffed. Robinson said his son became overwhelmed, exited the car and rushed towards the, the policeman. My son kept yelling, what are you doing with my daddy? Robinson told the news. He said his son was pushed and then fell to the ground. The police officer reported the restraint at the manor by kneeling on him and then spraying him with a pepper spray. My son cried out for water as his eyes burned him. The officer told him he was not getting any as he's a bad man. I couldn't do anything as I was handcuffed, said Robinson. A video of the cop using his knee and arms to hold the boy in place on the ground has gone viral. The cop's actions have been questioned by both the Child Protection and the Family Services Agency and the Jamaican Council for Justice, which both issued press releases on the issue. The police must distinguish between a frightened young primary school student responding to a potentially traumatic situation 
and the deliberate acts of misconduct. When dealing with children in situations like these, it is crucial to redirect their emotions and provide reassurance rather than resorting to force, said the CPFSA Chief Executive Officer, Laurette Adams Thomas. The CPFSA said it provided immediate on-the-spot counseling to both the children on Friday after a report from the St. Mary Police. The agency will also offer follow-up counseling sessions for the children this week. Recognizing the traumatic nature of such events, the agency also referred the father to the Victim Services Division for counseling and provided guidance by sharing the contact information for the Office of the Children's Advocate, said the release. Meanwhile, JFJ on Monday condemned what it has described as the use of excessive force by the cop. JFJ condemns this egregious violation of the child's rights and emphasizes the urgent need for a transparent and a comprehensive investigation into the circumstances surrounding this incident. The organization calls on the Jamaica Constabulary Force to take a swift and decisive action against the officers involved, ensuring they are held accountable for their actions, it said in a release from Executive Director Mikhail Jackson. She said the incident highlights the importance of proportionate responses by law enforcement. This proportionality becomes even more important when handling children, where there must be discernment of threat of harm and public safety versus a child who reported they acted out of emotions. The organization calls for a renewed focus on training that prioritizes the escalation techniques and emphasizes the protection of the rights and the well-being of all citizens, particularly minors and other vulnerable groups. Furthermore, the organization renews the call for use of body-worn cameras as evidence into the matter is seemingly relying on video footage of a mobile device, said Jackson. Robinson has taken comfort in the support from the CPFSA and the JFJ. He is also heartened by the support provided by members of the Arakabesa Primary School family, community members and the St. Mary Police. Superintendent in charge of St. Mary Bobbitt Morgan Simpson told the news that the matter is under investigation. I can only say the police officer is not from St. Mary, she said. Robinson is waiting to see the outcome of any investigation launched. Right now, my children's mother who is abroad is shaken up by the incident, and she cannot be here. I just want justice for my son, he said. Residents say man shot dead during police and military operation was innocent. A search for criminals who reportedly fled St. Catherine to evade the security forces following the declaration last week of a state of public emergency in that parish led to one man being shot and killed by the police at the 72 Mountain View Avenue in Kingston on Monday, sparking outrage among residents. According to the residents who blocked roads in protest, the killing occurred sometime after 5 a.m. and they insisted that the deceased who is known to them as a scrubs was not a criminal and was not wanted by the police. The residents described him as a man who was trying to find his way through life. According to the police, members of a joint Jamaica Defense Force and a Jamaica Constabulary Force team went in search of criminals believed to be on the run from St. Catherine when they were reportedly challenged and during a gunfight, Scrubs was shot. Based on intelligence, we understand that men were displaced from the St. Catherine area due to the SOE. The men opposed the police when trying to apprehend them. One man was shot and injured. He was taken to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. As we speak, detectives are on the scene, and we are also waiting for Indicom to commence their investigation, said the Deputy Superintendent of Police Sheldon Gordon. One JDF member was shot and injured during the incident. His condition is serious but not critical. The residents blocked the roads in protest over what happened. But I want to say that for criminals, there will be no safe haven. If they flee, we will catch them anywhere they go, even out at the sea. We are determined to catch them and to bring back law and order. We want this place to be a place where people can live, work, raise families and do business, Gordon said before revealing that no guns were seized following the incident. Even with soldiers walking around with rifles in hand and a mask on their faces, residents did not hold back their frustration when speaking to the media. The residents claimed that they could not think of one valid reason why Scrubs was shot and killed as he allegedly was the one who opened the door 
to allow the police and the soldiers to enter his house. They said it was sad that he lost his house to fire some time ago and now he has been killed at the house to which he relocated. The youth lives here. He was sleeping and they went and knocked on the door. The youth opened the door and they took him out and told him to pull another door. He told them he wasn't going to pull the door because he doesn't live in there and they just executed him, one resident alleged. Another resident, a woman, was puzzled as to why the security forces chose to rough up the people after being allowed a free entry into their homes. If people are cooperating with you, why rough up the people? After 5 a.m., they said they are looking for wanted men. And them go on with themselves and I'll rough up my stepson. The man that they killed doesn't match any of the description for people they were looking for. A long time this ago on, and 1999 them killed my brother. Their excuse is always that they see a man run and that caused them to shoot. It has to stop. It cannot continue. I have two sons who excel in high school. It could have been one of my sons this morning. They would have to kill me too. I can imagine what Scrub's mother is going through right now because I watched my mother deteriorate when they killed my brother. All they said was that somebody run. I'll know my mother can't gain back weight after they kill her son, the woman said. One elderly woman told the news that she was terrified by the actions of the joint police military team on Monday. The elderly woman claimed that at one point, a member of the security forces pointed a gun at her head. A male resident at the same time said that there has been peace in Mountain View for a good while now, but the incident on Monday could spoil things for them. He was perturbed by some of the things he said members of the security forces uttered during the operation. The policeman was trying to pop off my bag from around my neck, and him tell me said based on section 20 of some document, he can take away our rights by putting a gunshot to our head, he claimed. He added, we put up with a lot of crap from the security forces. Scrubs us no wanted man. What should we do? Should we still laugh up with the police after this?